Hello and welcome back. Video two. Today we're going to be talking about vector works and classes and layers. One of the biggest challenges is keeping drawings organized and easy to use, to find things, to manipulate. Vector works uses classes and layers uh, to really kind of help define where things go and what things are. We'll also be using sheets. That's another big one that we use, but we won't get into that until we start talking about viewports, exporting, and really kind of cleaning up your, your drawings for final presentation. But today we're going to be looking mostly, like I said, at classes and layers. Classes are the what. If you look down here in navigation, you'll see I have a whole variety of classes in this drawing. Classes are smaller things such as doors, flats, furniture, ground rows, lighting grid, lighting raceways, moldings. Um, so it's really a way to find items that have similar attributes and to lump them together so that you can turn certain components on or off depending on what you want to see or what you want to be working on in your drawing. When you look at layers, that's more about the where. That's the next tab over. That's more about larger groupings, uh, a broader grouping of things that um, that may or may not have similar attributes, but that you want to be able to turn on or off in a, in a larger sense. So in this example, I have lighting is its own layer. I have a building layer. I have a stage shell and I have the set is on its own layer. The other thing you can do with layers is change the location, the elevation of items. I'll show you some of that so that things can sit on top of other things without you having to manually adjust every single piece of your set to lift it up to put it onto the stage. So we'll look at that. First, let's jump right in uh, to the navigation over here. You have several different options. When we're looking at objects here, let me just put that into perspective. Um, when we're looking at objects here, you're always active in one class and in one design layer. So right now, I will be active in my set design layer, and I will be in flats, let's say. You can turn on or off all the other design layers or classes, except for the one that you're currently in. So if I have set checked right here, everything I build right now will, be, will fall automatically into set. Uh, but I can go ahead and turn off all these other items to where I'm just looking at my set. I can also gray them out. So you'll see they're there. You can kind of reference the building, but I'm really just wanting to focus on my set. And that's design layers. That helps you really kind of lump things into more manageable pieces. You'll also notice if I go to a straight front view that we have different um, elevations for these things. So the stage is coming in, it is one foot and 10 inches off the ground. There's the ground there. If we go to a front view, you'll notice that the entire set is lifted up. That's because when we add in the stage, the stage tops out at one foot 10. So you're able to change elevations on things. Similarly, lighting, everything I drop onto my lighting design layer will come in at the appropriate lighting height. So we have our raceways and our grid and all of that in there. You can actually access and see the elevations of all of your layers. Uh, if you click, you can double click here on layers. It'll open up this menu. And you'll see here lighting has an elevation of 14 foot. So if I'm working in my lighting design layer, everything I place is going to be placed at 14 foot, which is very convenient. If I'm working in my set layer, everything I build is going to come in at 1 foot 10 will be the bottom Z for that. And the building and the stage shell are at zero. While you're in here, you can also jump over to your classes and see what's happening with all of your classes. You can add attributes to all of your classes. Uh, I don't really do that a, a whole lot, but you can, uh, especially when you look at things like dimensions. Uh, that's where that comes in handy. Let's get out of here. The other place to access that same menu is up here. 
in our view bar that we had discussed. Here's your flats. Uh, yeah, sorry, your classes. Right now we're in flats. So double click classes. That'll bring up all of your classes. Or you can bring up your layer stack. And that'll give you all your layers. You can also order these. There is a hierarchy to these, especially when you're working in 2D. You can drag these so that they appear either above or below certain other things. So you can reorder the way that you see them. Similar to Photoshop. If you've worked in Photoshop, you'll know that you can stack things in certain layers that will conceal or reveal things above or below it. And that's very similar to the way that these layers work as well. So just to give you another look at layers in action, I have my larger groupings of set, building, stage, lighting equipment. And then within those, you can further kind of home things in. So say, for example, I want to get rid of this back wall so I can see things a little bit better. I went ahead and made that a class. So this back wall, if I click on it, you'll see up here the class is actually titled 3D Back Wall. That way I can go in and I can just go ahead and turn off that class. And then I can get down and I can place my camera right where the audience is. And I can get a really good view of what the audience is seeing without stage walls in my way. Again, if I wanted to get rid of the whole house, I could do that with my layer and just have the stage. Say I want to turn off just the chairs. They're all the exact same item, so I went ahead and just made all of these chairs the same class. So I can turn off just seating. Moving up closer to the stage, I'll turn off the building. Uh, and I will turn off the stage shell too. Let's go ahead and turn off lighting. I'm kind of done with that. So even within our set then, we can separate out certain things into different classes. For example, furniture. I dropped that all into its own class. So if I want to see this just the walls without the furniture, I can turn that off. As I start to break these pieces down a little bit more, and maybe I'm sending to a technical director or to a scene shop for building, I want to be able to give them uh, the ability to turn things on or off as well to really see what's underneath. So you can turn off moldings. So really there's endless things you can do. In this particular play, uh, let me turn my moldings back on and my doors. In this particular play, at the end of the play, these two walls slide off stage to reveal more of this ground row set behind here. So, to make it easier for me to see what that's going to look like, I went ahead and made these back panels their own class as well. So I can turn those walls on or off. So that's in their offstage position. This is their onstage position. And it just makes it really easy to toggle between views and to kind of see what I'm working with. And that's really the basics of classes and layers. We can go in here now and I'll show you a little bit how you start to work some of that. So let's say that this big center thing is our stage. If I wanted to make that its own layer, I'd select it, go up to layer here, and I'm going to make it a new design layer. We'll call that stage. Okay. And right now it kind of went gray. That's because down here in layer options, you have certain choices. The way in which you see other layers or classes is defined by what's up here. So if you have active only checked, the only thing you'll see are things that are in this design layer that you are actively on. If you are on, say, show others, then it will default to what's happening here. Then this visibility will take control. You can gray visible, invisible. If you're on show snap modify others, you can be in this design layer and still modify or tweak or play with anything in any of the other design layers. It has a very similar setup for classes.
So anyways, I'll stay in Show Snap Others, which means I can snap from one layer to another. Click, and those corners just catch. So we have our stage now. It's on its own design layer. Let's go ahead and uh, these three squares that I want to put on the stage, they should probably be their own class, right? And that way they'll have similar attributes, things like that. I'm going to keep them on design layer one, but I am going to change the class to, well, let's make a new class. We'll call it squares. And let's go ahead and make circles there on class two. I'll do it the other way this time. I'll just right click in my classes, new circles. Okay. And then we'll select these. And under class, I will choose circles. And then maybe let's put all of classes, all of uh, squares and circles will be on a new design layer too. And we'll call that set pieces. New design layer. Okay. So I can move one of these set pieces. Change these to show, snap, modify, so I can use all of them. I can move this up onto my stage. And all my little set pieces are now on the stage. A couple other things you can know. You can change attributes of an entire class. So say I want all of my squares to look a certain way. I can open up my classes. And under uh, squares, I can change the fill, or I can change the pen, or any of these other attributes that we can give to a polygon. So I'll jump in here, I'll change the fill to green. Okay. Now, it's not going to be green immediately. What I have to do then is change my attributes and say, make all attributes by class. Oh, squares, sorry. Make all, so we're going to be in squares. Make all attributes by class. Let's just select everything. So now all of our squares are green. If I go back into that class menu, and let's revisit this. If I hit this little checkbox up here, use it creation. If I'm in squares, anything I make will have those same attributes. So every square I make, or even if I'm not making a square, any shape I make now that I'm in squares is going to take on those same attributes. Uh, let's see here. So we can order our layers as well. I'm going to make this little lighting bar. Let's make that its own layer. So we'll go ahead and make that new design layer. We'll call that design layer lighting. Okay, in the class we'll give it, we will call this a hang position item. So now we have that hanging over the stage. We've got all of our set pieces below. One thing you can do in layers, let's open up our layer box again. You can change, like I said, the way in which these are viewed in the hierarchy. So if I move stage all the way up to the top, that's going to be the first thing we see. That's going to be blocking all of the other items. We don't want that. So we want to kind of put these in the way in which they will be seen. So we'll bring stage all the way down with lighting on top. Right now, everything is still on the same plane. They're still on our layer plane. But if we were to start making these things dimensional, then you'll see why it might matter. And let's extrude this. 
let's extrude our stage is going to be two foot high. All of our little squares and all of our little circles are buried in the stage. So how do we fix that? We can open our dialog box here. We can have our set pieces. We know the stage is two feet high, so we change the elevation to two foot. Now, all of our pieces are sitting right on top of the stage. Same thing, our lighting bar is buried now underneath here in the stage. So we'll open this up and we'll put our lighting bar at some arbitrary 20 feet up in the air. So now our light bar is hanging up there over the stage. And if I wanted to take a look at this little thing we've built without all the little circles and squares, I can just hide those classes now. Ooh, something just happened. So stage is actually in class squares. I'll just turn that into none for now. So now we can turn off squares. This needs to be none also. Actually, that was supposed to be hang position. There we go. Ta-da. So now we can turn these off or on. Or grade. And that's pretty much how classes and layers works. One thing to note. If you want to be able to see all of your layers together, you need to make sure that, um, let me turn all this back on. You need to make sure that what you're looking at in terms of the layers are all in the same scale. So you'll see on here, all of these are in the same scale. If the stage is not in quarter inch scale, like everything else, if that's in one inch scale, all of a sudden we won't be able to see it because it's not it's not apples to apples so you need to make sure that you, all of your design layers if you want to see them at the same time they all need to be in the same scale again just open your box there or you could open that stack up here you can flip between classes design layers and you can start changing stuff in here so I'll change this back to quarter inch scale 1 to 48 instead of 1 inch scale now it's back and that's kind of the basics of uh, classes and layers it is a little confusing but it's important to know that uh, the, the more you can start organizing your drawings as you create them the more heartache you're gonna save yourself down the road um, so that's the basics next lesson we're gonna jump in and actually just start making shapes and start playing around a little bit so now that we've kind of laid a groundwork I think you're in a good position to go out and start making stuff. Thank you very much. Have a good day.